Hi all and welcome back to Functional Scala. Today we are going to have a quick look at partial functions. As the name suggests, partial function is only partial implementation. It does not cover every possible value of incoming parameter. It can cater to only a subset of possible data that it has been defined for. In Scala, partial functions can be uh, defined to query if a function can handle a particular value. Do not confuse partial functions with partially applied function. Partially applied functions are supposed to pass in parameters whenever a value is available, whereas partial functions are just the partial implementation. As a part of this discussion, we'll also concentrate on three other very helpful uh, helper functions that are used with partial functions. These are collect, or else, and then. Let us move to Scala Ripple to see partial functions in action. Square root is a common operation that we perform, but we must validate that the input is a positive integer before we perform square root operation, else we'll get not a number as response. So let us declare this square root partial function. To create partial function, we need to implement two methods. One is apply and other one is, is defined at. In apply method, we would perform square root operation. But in order to keep away the invalid input, we would utilize isDefinedAt. isDefinedAt method would return false if incoming parameter is negative. Let us test our method on couple of values. A positive value for isDefinedAt and a negative value as well. Let us test a square root happens and it works as expected. Scala provides even a more concise way to implement partial functions. If you remember from our pattern match video, we came across case keyword, where we define a matching pattern followed by a guard statement. I have used the same case statement here, but without match keyword. So let us look at the syntax of partial function in detail. First, we have defined our val name, which is square root. Then we have given it a type partial function. We have to inform Scala that we will be expecting double as input parameter and will return a double. As I said earlier, that it is just a partial implementation. So we have only defined one case here, and that is if the double is positive. We are still not aware what would happen if incoming double is negative. So the guard statement here would act like is defined at method. And finally, we would define the body of operation. Let us test our new partial function with the same input parameter a positive 9 and its square root and then a negative 9. As expected, the result is same. Now, the next question is, where are partial functions useful? Consider this list of numbers having some values. Now, I want a square root of all these values. So, if I use a simple map function with map with math square root function, then I'll get this annoying NAN at the end of the list. We never intended to have that in our list. What could be worse? We could have even got an exception. So to avoid such unwanted scenario, we use partial functions along with collect. Collect takes in a partial function and applies it to all valid input parameters of collection. So let us execute 
the same operation again but by using our previously defined partial function and collect and now we can observe the result that we do not have any unwanted elements in our list what next now let us consider a new scenario of grading system have a look at below grades awarded by two schools based on the marks obtained by any student so if i have to code it in scala the easiest way is to use pattern match but if you look at the table again there are three scenarios that overlap and i don't want to write two huge blocks of pattern match what else we can do other option is to use partial functions to code scenarios one by one we will code each row as partial function then mix and match each function wherever it is required i will define three common partial functions that is grade c grade d and grade e that are common next is to define grade a and grade b based on the school requirements if you observe here we have told scala that our incoming parameter is going to be an int and will return a string or grade from partial functions i have defined all these partial functions in an object grade calculator i will import this grade calculator in my scala shell to award the grades based on marks now let us create a list of marks obtained by a student and find out what grade each school will award to the student so the student has three subjects and he has obtained 82 20 and 43 let us find out what are the grades from school 1 i will join all my partial functions to form a full implementation notice how i have used or else to join different partial functions in this scenario i am using grade a school 1 and grade b school 1 to form the implementation and these are the grades on the similar lines we'll calculate the grade by school 2 and these are the grades from school 2 thus partial functions have helped us to achieve greater modularization and save us time by enabling code reuse this is not the only way partial function can help us another way is to use and then operation let us consider a shop scenario so when a customer purchase a product he needs to pay vat charge service charge and insurance cover i'll declare all these three partial functions vat charge service charge and insurance cover all the partial functions will take in double as input and return double each function will apply respective charges on top of other charges let us find out how much customer has to pay if he purchases a product worth 225 quids from local shop with insurance i will declare a new val shop charges with insurance that would call all the partial functions one by one now i will provide 225 as argument to this to this new function again notice how i have used and then to combine partial functions to provide implementation now 
let us try to find out how much the same product would cost on airport. Remember, we do not pay VAT charges on airport. I will again create airport charges with insurance and this time we will skip call to VAT charge function. So approximately there is a difference of 60 quids. So now in order to understand what exactly has gone behind the scene, um, let us have a quick look at the functions again. I will redefine quickly all the above functions to take in string as input and return another string. Now I will again define my shop charges with insurance. This time I will pass the product price as net price. Notice how Scala has taken the input and applied all the partial functions one by one. Thus changing one output from one function as input to another function. I hope that makes, that makes it clear how and then operates on partial functions. So this is another way by which partial functions can help us to achieve greater modularization and code reuse. So that was a brief introduction about how to write a partial function in Scala. And then we had a look at example on how can we use partial functions with collect or else and then. I hope you have enjoyed on how we can break our code into functional blocks. Try to practice these functional constructs in your free time. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.